Hey guys, it's Rory from UK Doctor on Fire back here to bring you another episode of how to pass MRCP. For those of you who have recently passed MRCP part one, very well done. The only thing to say is just make sure you take a week off to congratulate and enjoy yourself because celebrating the mini successes in life well, MRCP Part 1 isn't really a mini success, it's a major success. But regardless, celebrating successes in life are so important. You can always come back and watch this guide next week if you'd like, but make sure you come back. So today's video is to really talk about my experience of MRCP Part 2 written and also give you the key points on how you will pass MRCP Part 1 on your first attempt. So to begin off, I just wanted to say that I remember in late 2014 in December time, I drove about 50 miles from Wakefield to Manchester the night before the exam with my girlfriend back then. It was my dad's second-hand red Mercedes C-Class that I'd borrowed from Scotland, and its wheels had always been quite dodgy. Having absolutely no interest in car maintenance whatsoever, I had simply procrastinated for months and months and successfully avoided having to change the tyres. Instead, I would resort to just sporadically filling them with air at the petrol station whenever it became too dangerous to drive. On arrival in Manchester, we stayed in a decent enough hotel and had their signature meal on the first night. I then drove to the rugby stadium with plenty of time to spare and sat at a windowsill half watching other people cramming a last minute question and half contemplating whether all of this actually mattered at the end of the day. What mattered was that my girlfriend was here with me and that I was in good health, cliche as it sounds. It was a nice day in fact. Both days were rather sunny but at the same time it wasn't overly humid. The paper lasted three hours and I remember quite clearly I had about ten minutes left at the very end. Instead of returning to the trickier, dubious questions that we're always told when it comes to exam technique, I decided to conserve energy and rested my head on the table instead. When it was time for lunch, I realised unfortunately a little too late that the stadium was situated in the middle of nowhere and therefore I had to purchase a slightly undercooked and cheap tasting burger from a food van. I also had the delight of washing it down with Tetley tea that the guy had added too much milk to, so I definitely wouldn't recommend that. The second paper then felt like one hour had passed. I didn't understand why there was so much dermatology and rheumatology, and therefore carried all those negative thoughts with me back to the hotel room, unfortunately. The next day we checked out the hotel and drove to the stadium, again with plenty of time to spare. This time I left my girlfriend in the stadium car park and promised to come out very soon. I tried to reassure her that three hours would pass very quickly, but to be honest I was really fearing the worst myself after that second paper. This last paper thankfully contained far more standard specialty subjects and thus released some of the tension from the awkward second paper. I tell you my personal story not because I think it's exciting or significant, but because I hope you can apply my thoughts to your own preparation and thus make it more relevant to you and your preparation. The first point I'd like to draw your attention to is how important the non-technical skills are. Once you've made the decision to apply for MRCP Part 2 written, I would like you to immediately plan your physical journey prior to your study preparation. Find out where the exam venue will be and pick a location you're familiar with, if at all possible. Organise a hotel within walking distance or at least within taxi distance and ensure that it's a fancy one, meaning you might be looking to spend more than £100 per night, depending on what your definition of fancy is, of course. If you're walking in the morning, make sure you consider what happens if the MRCP gods pour torrential rain on you. The last thing you want is to sit a demanding and life-changing exam uncomfortably soaked and smelling of rain. If you're taxiing, then ensure that you call the night before and book your ride to arrive in plenty of time. I would strongly recommend against driving long distances on morning or even the night before, for obvious reasons. 
and ensure you research your menu so that you know whether you need to prepare a healthy packed lunch, since junk food causes nothing more than the cloudy mind that can't function properly, and I certainly made that mistake. The good news is that MRCP Part 2 written will now transition to a one-day 200 mark exam from 2018 onwards, whereas previously it was a two-day 270 mark exam. Although the specific breakdown of specialties has yet to be released, it may be worthwhile to actually wait a diet and sit the exam after the new year instead of now, but it's of course up to you. Only after you've completely organised your physical journey can we move on to the second point, which is your mental and study preparation. It's certainly safe to assume that major subjects such as respiratory or diabetes and endocrine will take a proportionally larger number of marks in the exam than the smaller subjects. Therefore, you should actively allocate your time effectively, weighting it more towards the heavyweight subjects. For example, if you have a total of 200 hours to study for MRCP Part 2 written, and we find out that 15 of the total 200 marks will be allocated to respiratory, then you need to ensure you spend a full 15 hours on respiratory. And in the same example, if dermatology is only worth 5 of the 200 total marks, then you should only spend 5 hours of your time, regardless of how anxious or uncertain you might feel, because everyone has those feelings, let's be honest. Remember, there, there is no way the examiners expect you to become an expert after 15 hours of studying respiratory, or 5 hours of dermatology. And for exam purposes, some specialties are more equal than others, just to take a quote from Animal Farm. And therefore, you have to use your limited time wisely. Thirdly, you should decide on what resources you'll use. Try not to be over-enthusiastic in your choices, as quality is always better than quantity. And I would recommend only two books for MRCP Part 2 written. By far the most useful book on MRCP I've ever read, Rapid Review of Clinical Medicine for MRCP Part 2, takes you through literally hundreds of patient cases using a systematic and easy to follow manner. After the case description, which you could almost treat as a question stem, the authors proceed to test your knowledge on data interpretation and application in real life scenarios, which is so relevant to MRCP Part 2. This format prepares you to make associations and also think laterally. Apart from being a great information consolidator, I felt that this text to be very readable and relatable as the cases personally felt much more relevant than simply doing practice questions. And before I knew it, I was actually turning page 400. After exhausting Sharma's 400 page book in three weeks, I was quite hungry for more data to interpret and I assure you I'm normally terrible at reading or finishing books. The answer was complete data interpretation for the MRCP. Perhaps one or two myocardial perfusion scans isn't enough to satisfy your hunger for knowledge. Enter this book as it'll give you some more examples to scratch your head over. If you've ever wondered how you will understand the basics of bone scans, or how you even make sense of all those numbers in right heart catheterization, then this is the book for you. Just to save you guys some time, I've included links to both books that I've recommended in the YouTube description down below, so have a look when you're free. The key aspect to resources is not to overload yourself, because if you purchase 10 books and only manage to read a few pages from each, you're much better off concentrating on one or two key texts. The other resource you'll need to use, as in MRCP Part 1, will be a trustworthy question bank such as Past Medicine, Past Test or One Examination. I found question banks particularly useful as I wasn't and still am not someone who is gifted at studying for no purpose. However, if I come across a term or knowledge gap at work, for example, I generally try my best to fill the void and I think most people learn like this. Question banks serve the purpose of exposing chinks in your knowledge armour and therefore motivate you, using the power of fear, to do some serious background reading. And this is the reason you should invest in one reliable question bank. 
Now, taking into account Pareto's law and not wanting to overburden you or continue rambling, if you follow the above three points, you're already 80% there. Everything else is just icing on the cake. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out my MRCP Part 1 and 2 guide, where I explore all of the above and more in much more detail, and the link is in the description below as well. This concise guide took me many months to assemble and consists of my detailed experiences as well as those from senior past candidates who sat the exam with me at the same time. And therefore I hope it will help you clear MRCP once and for all. If you liked this video and you felt that it's helped you, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and also spread the word. Okay, take care now and good luck with MRCP.